Hey guys, how are you? Let me do something different with the lighting in here while you're coming in. Hey, Pastor K, how are you? Let me do something different. to deal with this light my kitchen my kitchen has like um let me see if i can keep my head in the way my kitchen has like one two three four five i have like five different lighting systems in this kitchen so and i've been here we moved in to this house about five years ago and i still haven't figured out what light switch turns on what what nothing do around here so um, just bear with me. Hey, Gwendolyn, how are you? Hey, Miss Sharon, how are you? Rashida, Carlos, hey, everybody. Glad to see you on today. I'm um, going to go ahead and get started. Not going to stay here long. So, for those of you who know, we actually started, um, yes, ma'am, blessings to you. We actually started a three part series last week, and it really went in the direction when I first started studying. Um, about the oils and stuff it took me in a direction that I didn't think that I was going to head in so but it took me you know on the journey with dealing with cholesterol LDLs and HDLs and total triglycerides and things like that so hence it came into a three-part series so last week we dealt exclusively with the um, low um, with the LDLs and HDLs and triglycerides what that meant what that means to you um hey miss Tammy and as far as um what that means to you as far as numbers what that means to you as far as lifestyle what that means to you as far as longevity and as far as your health so we dealt with that um one of the key things about dealing with a cholesterol level anyway either either um getting it to go down or um just maintaining it is to fiber diets that are high in fiber so that's why on all the oatmeal stuff that you see people hey synovia and i have your bottle synovia i have to get it to gerald to get to you so one of the things with uh, cholesterol is that you have fiber that's why you see on the oatmeal boxes of that it's good for fiber um one of the things that i don't want you doing uh microwavable oatmeal is garbage so you really need to be doing the um and not the one minute oatmeal either. You need to be doing the at least the five minute one or better yet the steel oats that you're able to cook at night. You know, hey um Keith, what's what you know, Keith, what you know? Hey Roosevelt, how are you? So you want to be doing the oats, the oats that are still cut oats, or at least the ones that are cooked for five minutes, because the ones that you put in the microwave are garbage. Matter of fact, I'm not I don't advocate anybody really microwaving anything. I have learned to be an old school girl and matter of fact I really grew up that way so when we did get a microwave it wasn't anything I grew up where everybody else had a microwave in their house but us um, and one of the things with that is that you have to um, because the microwaves and the infrared rays and all of those different things that go into microwaving your food so I don't do that even now when I cook meals and I cook dinner I don't really put anything in the microwave I'll take my portion out of the dish or if I'm, my whole family is gonna sit down and eat and I'll just warm everything up in the pots for everybody so um, takes a little more work but that's all in a lifestyle we're not talking about a quick fix it's all in the lifestyle so thank you for those of you who are coming on as you're coming on please share me if you have not shared me please share me hey angela hey hey apostle joseph so as you're coming on share me um tag people that you think this would benefit <laughs> Listen, Roosevelt, I ain't laughed in a few days. Now you just may I you just crack my you just crack my jaw. I'm so appreciative of that. I haven't laughed in a few days. I, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, of course, the microwave is beneficial for some quick fixes. I'm not saying that, you know, throw the baby out with the bath water, but um because it definitely is a lifestyle. Um actually when we bought this house, one of the things our demands was is that we had a convection microwave because our microwave would actually cook like a stove. It would actually cook like an oven. So that is one of the benefits of this particular microwave that we have, that it will function a little differently than the traditional microwave. 
So that is the thing with that. So for Meal Prep Monday, some of you who may be new, I see a lot of new people that are on. And those of you who are old, you know what Meal Prep Monday. I know people probably came on and they thought, oh, she's going to be cooking and sauteing stuff and doing this and doing that. And yes, we do do that. We do live demonstrations and we have done it in the past. We'll be doing a lot of that in the summer. But my biggest concern with Meal Prep Monday is that I am concerned about what you are prepping. Um, it is, you know, meal prepping is a trend now. Everybody has their plate. Their, their, their uh, plastic kits out and everybody got their stuff out and they're cooking on Saturday, they're cooking on Sunday and they're preparing things for um, all week long. Um, my biggest thing about meal prepping, if you don't do anything else, at least meal plan for the week so that you know when you go to the grocery store, you know what it is that you're buying. You may not necessarily prep everything all at one time, so don't feel condemned about that because you're not. Don't feel some type of way because you're not. But at least sit down and prep out and articulate your meals for the week and you can at least do that so that you can effectively go to the grocery store and buy the rightful things and helpful things that you need for that um, me personally the only thing that i really meal prep right now is breakfast because that's the hardest thing of the day for my family so hey um prophetess valor that's the hardest thing for my family right now is breakfast. Um, I, growing up, I didn't eat breakfast. One, because of financial, economic situations. But then um, another thing is that we just didn't have time. You know, my mom was a single parent, so we getting up just in time enough to get out the door and get it going. So hence, I never really became a great breakfast eater. My kids really don't, you know, um, unless I force it. Now, the ones that my son who trains a lot, he'll eat breakfast. So I have come to a place now that I've started meal prepping breakfast. So I do um, yoga parfaits I do chia pudding and I'll do all of that on a Sunday evening and I'll get it together with them and I'll do some salad jars as well so that people can pick and grab and go and that's what they need to do so um yes prophetess Valor thank you so much for um the encouragement that you have always given so um hey prophet O'Meal apostle doctor prophet O'Meal Reed such a young man to have so much knowledge wrapped in one body but um so those are the things that i've started doing is meal prepping for breakfast and i'll tell you why like um miss valora miss valora cold is on we're foodies and so it is very challenging for me to say that i'm going to meal prep some food for the whole week because you know y'all might say i'm bad and bougie y'all might call me bougie whatever but i don't eat leftovers so that is very challenging for me to meal prep because i'm not going to eat tomorrow probably what i cook today so that's just me. So I don't really meal prep for dinners. I, and plus the fact we're busy a lot. We're, we're really, really busy. So um, a lot of times it was still, um, it was still potentially end up being wasted so t so on mondays i really want to how do you keep the salad from being saturated with your hey roosevelt what i do is roosevelt i don't put the dressing on the salad and this is what i do roosevelt i'm going to show you what i do real quick i did a salad dressing demonstration i made a soy balsamic vinaigrette a few weeks ago and i think i made a dijon mustard vinaigrette a couple of weeks ago and i used these bottles um to make them and what it is is that um i go ahead and i pre-make these in here and those particular things that so if i'm at home i can use this mm -hmm. but if i'm not at home hey demicia um congratulations on your um your launch for your nonprofit ministry or nonprofit organization congratulations big ups to you um, so I use this Roosevelt or I have, um, I don't have my little containers in here. They're in another place that would take me too far away from the phone. But I, or I'll put my dressing in little containers, especially if I'm going to take it to work with me or, or they going to take it with them because my work is at my house. I'm full-time ministry and then my, I'm full and I'm a business owner. So I'm home. So, but I do this right here, and it was a, so you can go back and see how I made those. It was really, really cool. So that's what I do with that. Um, so that's what I want for you all to understand what to put in your containers for the meal prep. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. To God be all the glory for that push. We all need a push sometime. So I want you all to understand 
what it is that you need to put in these containers because oftentimes what happened with the with the meal prepping trend is that everybody is prepping the same thing but i want for you to understand that your body is a bio individual that if you know it depends on if you want to if you need to have weight release or if you just need waste management or if you need to gain weight if you if you're having a problem with high blood pressure um if you have problem with diabetes if you have hey t Hey, what's going on? If you have problem with problems with diabetes, if you have problems with high blood pressure, um, if you have thyroid problems, all of those different dynamics dictates how you're going to prep your meals for the week. It could be something very different. So that's what I want to. I want us to get on the trend of meal prepping and meal preparation. But I want for you to begin to be specific in regards to the needs that you have for your body and the needs that you have for your family, and not just put some in a plate or put some in some plastic containers just because you saw some mom and them do it or you saw somebody else do it because what they are putting what they are meal prepping may not be hey malika what they are meal prepping may not be beneficial for you so last week we dealt with the cholesterol issues the hds the lds t Fay, i need to come to the salon and do a wellness party Tell me yes. Tell me yes. I want to come to the salon and do a wellness party for um, clients and people who um, live in the area. What you talking about? That you talking about that dipping that um you don't woke me up. No, it's not. This is not only for females. I got somebody inboxing me about is this only for females? Okay, T Fay, I'm a, I got to get with you. I really want to do a wellness party. Um, I have a I have a passion for hairstylists and teachers. Go figure. But I really do. I have a passion for hairstylists and teachers, and because I grew up watching an aunt of mine who was a hairstylist, they never ate, they never got out of the salon. So hence, um, one of the one of the ladies in there died from severe complications of diabetes. Hey, aunt, hey, nurse Ann. Um, and then my aunt um, wasn't wasn't well because they never get around. They're standing in the same place, so they have poor circulation. Um, they, they, they can't get nothing to eat. So I really want to get in the salon, get in your salon and start doing wellness parties. So if you are a salon agent like t um, owner and you have a salon, I would love to come do a wellness party there for you and your clients and other stylists that would want to come in the area and get educated. And also I would love to do something with meal preps for salon owners and for those who rent booths, rentals for them to at least, um, for, to bring a meal to them a day, um, very economical so that you can eat well. The salon people. People got to eat well. They slay us and everything else, and they need to eat well, too. But that's my random way. That's the sidebar. So tonight I want to talk about the um, oils that we need to use to cook, the oils that we use to cook. Um, there are four basic nutrients that we need. There are water. Uh, most stylists do have Jack. Yes, um, T. Fat. I grew up watching that. You know, I grew up watching stylists have Jack because because y'all standing, y'all eating. You know, clients come in late. They don't come in on time, y'all, and then the only thing y'all could grab is a bag of chips or whatever the case may be. So, and and that's that or something that's real quick, whatever the barbecue sandwich, which is good, which is good. You can, you know, you can have a, anything in moderation, but I want to really get with salon agents to see how we can get them um, very, you know, healthy. I look at people like... Um, Miss Mel, who passed, Miss Melody, who passed way, 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 way too early. And a lot of that was just the stress from being a stylist, probably a poor diet for a lot of that time. And, you know, I just, you know, just want to do, just want our stylists to have a better quality of life when it comes to their health. So there are four basic nutrients, water, carbs, proteins, and fat. Water, carbs, proteins, and fat. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to deal with fats. Last week, we dealt with your cholesterol levels. This week, we're dealing with the cooking oils. And next week, we're going to deal with cooking with essential oils, which we call EOs. So there are three major categories of fat. They're saturated, polysaturated, and monosaturated. Um, so when we're dealing with the um, saturated fats, these are basically things that are primary animal products. These are the these are the fats that you see, like coconut oil, that at room temperature they're solid. And in order for you to use them, you're gonna have to melt them down or whatever the case may be. Um, coconut oil for most of us, especially those of us who are natural. We use it for our hair as some type of conditioner or some type of deep oil treatment or whatever the case may be. But you can also cook with coconut oil. Uh, with coconut oil, um, the only thing with that is that, and 
coconut oil sometimes can go rancid or it can spoil um a little quicker they're doing a little better with the pres preservation of coconut oil now but it can go rancid really quickly um uh, uh saturated fats are primarily animal products dairy um and fatty meats so that is why you really have to limit the amount of animal products that you're eating, the amount of dairy that we're eating. Y'all know my take on dairy. I don't really believe in grown folks still drinking cow milk. That's just me. So, uh, hey, Monica. So, if you're gonna, if you are a milk drinker, I would recommend, you know, almond milk, cashew milk, coconut milk. But I just don't believe in grown folks still eating, ca drinking cow milk that still got hormones in it that's meant for a, a calf, a baby calf. That's just me. I don't, I don't agree with that. So, and I believe that's why so many of our girls are, are, are develop, have developed so fast and you got 10 year olds with bodies like 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds because of so many hormones that are in the foods now to either preserve them or, um, took in the growth process of that particular food so i think we have to be careful with that so saturated fats primarily animal products dairy and fatty meats um the good thing about the thing about um the saturated fats is that saturated fats are used by the liver to manufacture cholesterol because cholesterol cholesterol is just fat that's all that it is. So the liver uses saturated fats to manufacture cholesterol. So if the liver uses saturated fats to manufacture cholesterol and you have high cholesterol and cholesterol runs in your family, when you're doing your meal prep, that means you're going to kind of be conscientious in regards to dairy. You're going to be conscientious in regards to fatty meats. You're going to be conscientious in regards to how much animal products you're using um and even what you cook what type of oil that you're meal prepping in if you have a issue with cholesterol um with saturated fats so for those of you who have issues with cholesterol even if you have some type of cardiac problems um cardiac disease or whatever the case may be you may not want to use co hey um dear hey Derek, you may want to use um you may not want to use coconut oil to saute your foods or fry your foods or do anything or whatever with um, if you have a cholesterol issue. I would not recommend that because of the fact that the liver uses saturated fats to manufacture cholesterol. Just, just use it on your hair as a deep condition and keep it pushing. Um, polysaturated fats, the other, sec other category is polysaturated fats, which is corn, soybeans, flour, sunflower, and some fish oils. The good thing about polysaturated fats um, is that it lowers the total cholesterol, um, but it also lowers the good cholesterol. And it is also, <laughs> not even then, Lord Jesus. Um, it, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you funny, Monica. It lowers the good cholesterol. Um, and, and the thing with polysaturated fats is that they're also high in caloric value compared to their weight and volume. Yes, ma'am. Smart balance is perfect. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So you're doing a good job with that. So um, so that's good. So just remember polysaturated oils is the um, polysaturated oils of corn, soy, soybeans, safflower, and sunflower. So towards the end of this, I'm going to give you some ideas in regards to what oils are good for baking, what oils are good for frying and sauteing. Um, and, and I want to know... Uh, I should have did a trivia to see whether or not y'all knew all these oils. I found about 20 different types of oils that are used in the nation. So the last thing um, is monosaturated oils, which are veggie and nut oils, olive oils, peanut oils, and canola oils. And the good thing about this is that they actually reduce the bad cholesterol without affecting the good cholesterol. So guess what? These are the better options for cooking. So the better options for cooking are olive oil, peanut oil, canola oil, veggie oils, and nut oils. So that's a no-brainer, duh, that those are the oils that you're going to use to cook. So the top oils that you should really have in your pantry are olive oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, and peanut oil. Um, I think the big rave at one time was coconut. Everybody was on this coconut oil trip. But the only thing is, is that it really does not have, um, it actually is on the bottom of the list for quality oils as it relates to consumption, truthfully. But people have really been going, you know, really crazy about coconut oil. As well, and I did too before I really got on the bandwagon and I did my just due diligence and researched it. So, 
I'm not going to be before you too much longer. So we'll, so coconut oil. Now, I'm going to tell you what coconut oil is good for. It is good for your hair. It is good for something called oil pulling. Um, you put a teaspoon of coconut oil in your mouth. It will liquefy in your mouth. And you basically swish it around in your mouth and through your teeth for about 10 to 15 minutes. When you first start out, it makes your jaws really sore. But what it, what it does is it coats, it actually coats your mouth. And because you have mucous membranes inside of the mouth, what it does is it, it actually forms as a manual detox. Where you actually begin to pull toxins out of your body through the co coconut oil. You could do this with other types of oil as well but the coconut oil is one of the best oils to do that so um would you say olive oil is high ah, tea so um so that's the, the good for that also coconut oil is good to do the same thing with the pulling but it also is a great teeth whitener um coconut oil is also um a great restorative um a great restorative as it relates to cavities. If you have a cavity that has not gotten too bad yet to the point where it needs a root canal, um, you actually can literally restore that cavity by using um, coconut oil with some other measures, with like some D3, um, with a D3 vitamin, some vitamin E, and some bone broth type deal. You actually can, hey Marsha, you actually can restore that cavity um, if it's in the early stages, but not root canal point but if it's in the early stages so coconut oil does have its benefits the best oils for baking are olive sunflower and canola but if you really want to do your thug fizzle and baking um i'm not a baker i can't bake nothing i can't even i can cook but i can't bake nothing um honey you don't want nothing that i bake i done tried i even follow the directions and it just don't it don't do right but some other alternatives, even when you're even for baking as well, to replace the oils as well is um, applesauce. Applesauce can also replace cooking oils. And we learned this in one of our interactives a few weeks ago about the different things that can replace some of the stuff that we're using all the time, but it's not helpful for us. So I would challenge you to go back and look at that. It was a really good episode. Um, the, now, the, the best oil for sautéing is... Um, extra virgin olive oil now that's the best oil for sauteing and that's also the best oil for if you want to create your own salad dressings as well because it, it, it really will um, take on the f flavor beautifully of the ingredients that you put in whether it's balsamic vinaigrette um, balsamic vinegar whether it's lemon lime whatever it is that you choose with your herbs it really works beautifully with that so with the extra virgin olive oil hey Sharonda how is Texas doing how is your son doing has graduation happened yet also with the frying um, the best oils for frying are safflower sunflower and peanut safflower sunflower and peanut one of the things with them the reason why they're good for that as well is because they have a high conduction rate which means that they have a high burn point before they was a high smoke point before they start smoking up your house okay now there are some other ones as miss t face said that are expensive they're of almond avocado um they are expensive and they're exp and that's if you can find them. Um, what happens in westernized culture when we're here in the U.S. There are so many other health opportunities for different things that we that we don't have available to us. Like how many of you know that there was a hazelnut oil? Um, how many of you knew that there was a hazelnut oil, a pistachio oil, a rice bran oil? And apricot oil. How many of you knew that those are the di those are different type of oils? So I will give you an assignment between now and next meal prep Monday to go in a health food store and look around and see what they have to offer. Um, that's one of the things that I really want to break the barrier of is us wrapping around our minds about the expense because usually yes the things may be a little more high in in retail value, but you don't have to use as much. Oh, Latanya, okay. Battling with this cholesterol and triglycerides now. Yes, ma'am. So you battling with that, just make sure you getting your oatmeal, getting your oatmeal in. Um, for you since you're battling with it, you really need to be doing oatmeal every day. Still oats, not that quick stuff, not that microwave stuff, and not that one minute stuff. You need to be doing the real deal oatmeal. I want you doing the oatmeal every day with some fresh fruit. 
if you're going if you're gonna flavor it flavor it with a little bit of honey a little bit of maple syrup and i want you to increase your fiber intake um as well because that's what really really helps with the um with with the um with the with the uh, cholesterol levels because that's what you trying to reduce the plaque from hardening in the arteries or making deposits in the arteries when you have the high fiber then hey katrina when you have the high fiber then that's what that's what helps with that is all with that yes walking for 30 minutes a day help lower cholesterol too absolutely so yes and so that means that we got to increase our um, we got to increase our exercise and we have to minimize our fried foods and all honesty um, I can honestly tell you and this is no lie um, It's 12 months in a year and I promise you in my house. We probably we probably fry something maybe five times in our house We don't We don't fry a lot one my husband does not like the way it smells in the house I don't like it getting in my clothes. I don't like it getting in my hair but we don't fry a lot at our house at all. Probably maybe five times a year. We fry turkey at Thanksgiving time. That's one of the times. Every now and then I might crave some fried fish. That's two. Um, but we don't fry stuff over here. So um, so that's one of the lifestyle changes, especially for um, African Americans. It's a lifestyle change. Um, the not frying. You know, um, you know, fried chicken and fried pork chops and, you know, smothered, smothered steak, fried, you know, all of that different type of stuff. It really is a lifestyle change. Um, right now we are on day 15 as of today for our 40 days of wellness transformation challenge for our participants. And we're in the detox phase right now. And that's one of the difficult things that they're having. If you they're having is the no meat and the, the fried chicken and the fried foods and, the, and all of that kind of stuff and they're really having some problems with it but they really are coming through with fly, fly, flying colors and I'm really really impressed with them and so the thing of it is, is that you have to come to a place where you're going to make a decision and you're going to have to determine it's either going to be you or that pork chop it's going to be you or that pork chop fried pork chop it's going to be you or that fried piece of chicken because the thing about pork chop you know most people say oh you're not supposed to be eating pork and pork make your blood pressure go up and blah 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 yada 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 but the thing of it is is that pretty much any meat you can eat as long as it's a lean cut of meat even even pork so usually with pork the lean hey miss sylvia usually with pork the lean cut of the meat is the tenderloin the thing that comes in a little tube so that's usually the lean cut of the pork that you can have with that um and just bake it just put it on in the oven and just bake it Yes, it does. Pork chop has a lot of fat in. That's why I said tea with the um with the pork tenderloin. The pork tenderloin is the portion that comes in the tube. It comes in that long looking tube, and that's the one that is the lean. That's the lean cut that's acceptable as far as um health expect does. Um, even with beef, as long as you got, long as you have like a eighty twenty mix, or you have a um lean beef, usually lean beef is good too. Because the reality of it is, is that when we start talking about the fat or we start talking about the beef and the different meats that have different things, we have to be careful because what may work for you does not work for me. And what does not work for me may not work for you. So you might not be able to eat pork chop and you might not be able to eat beef. And then some people, it's just a preference. They do whether it's religious or whatever. They just, that's not what they do. And I think some people don't do it as well also because of the fact of what media and what they've heard and not what they know and not what they've researched. Um, because there are some people that do very well with what's called paleo diets. There are some people that do very well with high protein protein and 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 beef and red meat and they they do they do very well with it and sometimes that could be because of their blood type um depending on what blood type you are you will do well with beef um depending on what your hey marlo depending on just de, just depending on your unique bio individuality profile depends on how well you do with whatever type of meat um you know, with that, but and all of that, we still have to be careful of. Uh, we still have to be careful of animal protein and products because the animal protein and the animal products are saturated fats, and those are the things that the liver processes to manufacture cholesterol. So that's why we do want the lean cut of meats or whatever we're doing, and always remember 
that whether it's, whether it's pork chop, whether it's chicken, whether it's fish, whether it's whatever. Remember, I think what happens is we get out of hand because we don't do a serving size. Hey, Pedro, serving size should fit in the palm of your hand, which is about four ounces. And I think that's what we get off with, with animal products is we go, we go, we go to Manny's Steakhouse, a chop house in our area here where I live. And we go in there and we get a 10 ounce porterhouse or a 12 ounce porterhouse, a 16 ounce porterhouse when you ain't got no big business with none but four ounces of meat six ounces at the most and that's pushing it so that's where we really get off with the different um that the different protein products is that we really just eat too much of it and i believe i believe everything can be great for you in moderation that's that's just me that's what i've studied as a nurse um that's what I clinically know hey miss carol that you know if we could just moderate what we eat and yes, ma'am, amen, getting too much meat at once. Yes. And I think the thing that we have to, that's what I've had to work with a couple of my transformers on in the, in the program is that, and it's okay. It's okay if you don't eat meat all day. You ain't got to eat meat every day. Some people just think they just got to eat meat every day, all day, three times a day. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you the biggest people who really have a problem with not eating meat is pastors. The pastors that I have um, coached in wellness and health, and they do the program, Lord Jesus, them and that, them and that meat, they just can't, they, they be like, sis, I, I, I can't go, I can't go all day, I can't go all day without no meat, or, or, or sis, can I just get a little extra, a little extra meat, because this portion right here, you know why, because everything in America, in this westernized culture says supersize it, everything. You go through the drive through or wherever you're going, it's supersized. We go to Manny's Chop House. We go to Outback. We go to wherever. And have you, and I, have you ever seen where Manny's Chop House or Outback or Longhorns got a, got a four-ounce steak on the menu? I ain't seen it yet. Now, they might, but I ain't seen it. So, so I think the smallest they may have is six ounces. I think I've seen like six ounces on somebody's menu. But they already cater, us, cater to us having larger appetites. They already... Um, you know, push us into that that place of um, eating more and consuming more. So when you're going, when we're, I'm taking them through the de detox, boy, it's a struggle. And these pastors not to eat this meat. It's a struggle. So that's that. Anyway, so if you got any questions for me, come on, pop them up on the screen really quickly so I can get you out of here. Um, last week we talked about the LDLs and HDLs last week. So if you really need that, I, can't, I think it was, was it Latonya, Latoya? Latoya, you might want to go back and look at the segment from last week about the um, ADLs and, and all of that kind of stuff or whatever. And then this week we talked about the different types of cooking oils. And next week we're going to talk about cooking with essential oils, which I'm really, 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 really excited about with cooking with essential oils on next week and why that's so important and why I believe in um, essential oils is really, really important. So saturated, polysaturated, and monosaturated fats in the cooking oils. And so the most important thing that you should have learned tonight, if nothing else, y'all need to read the labels. Read the labels. Read the labels because even with the saturated, the polysaturated, the monosaturated fats, those things are also placed in other food um, um, food products. So you really want to look at, hey Tanika, you really want to look at what it is that you're consuming because the fats not are, just, not, are not just placed in just looking at what you're cooking to find your food with. Those fats are also placed in... Um, <laughs> T Fay, I can't. Fay, T, I can't with you today. So T Fay Duna says, What about this raw apple cider vinegar? Does it burn fat? Is it gonna kill me in the long run? Um, I'm trying to live a long time. Actually, um, T Fay, you got a winner with apple cider vinegar, raw apple cider vinegar. Actually, Bragg's actually makes a pre-made solution of it right now, so you ain't even gotta mix it yourself no more. They already make it up for you. So actually, um, it's good for you. The ACV um, wash, um, you can actually, you know, they used to call, there was one they used to call the master cleanse with the cinnamon in it and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people can't handle it because it gives them, um, 
they kind of get what the what the old people come say it come back up on them it come back up on them but a lot of stuff yes yes tammy the brags is very very good very good so t Fay, try the brags if you haven't already but it is good for you y'all know i'm a big proponent of eight to 16 ounces of warm lemon water every morning so t Fay, actually what that acv is doing is actually functioning as a little mini detox that you're getting every day is what it's functioning as and the reason why it says that it burns fat because what it does is it actually stimulates the metabolism the metabolism but it actually it actually goes in and it deals with your gut too we have to remember that our gut our intestinal tube houses 80 percent of our immunity so if our gut is not healthy then we're going to be sick and our immunity rate is going to be lower. That's why I'm so excited about talking about cooking with essential oils next week because 80% of our immune system is in our gut. That's why a lot of us are, um, you know, are sick. That's why a lot of us have so many different ailments because our gut is so filled up. You know, we people of God and, you know, this is what I like to, um, oh, with Indian River grapefruit juice, I got to try that tea. So, um. That's why, yeah, and those toxins that are caused by the free radicals in your body. You can't get around the free radicals. When you breathe, you produce free radicals. When you move, you produce free radicals. When you sleep, you produce free radicals. So you have to have antioxidants that come into play with that. I need help with my gut. Marcia, what's going on with your gut? So, um, so we need that. And, you know, Marcia, most of us need help with our gut. I had irritable bowel syndrome for years. For years and I actually have a bathroom phobia um, my husband will not he'll clean every room in the house but he would not clean the bathroom because he's like girl can't nobody clean that bathroom like you I have a bathroom phobia and for me to have had irritable bowel syndrome was like it was very traumatic because I have a bathroom phobia but when you have to go you have to go and so I really had to come to a place where I really had to heal my gut because I was not gonna be going in there by the bathroom I just was not gonna be doing that so um, so with that being said, we have to do that so that we can be healed through and out. You know, that is one thing with us as, you know, those of us who are faith based sometimes, you know, and, and I know people, I'm not going to like me. Y'all probably going to give me no more hearts after this. You might not get on again, but I think the thing of it is that we're missing into play that the Bible says that some things come out through fasting and prayer. And we've always taken, we take that hey Glenn and we've always taken that to mean that we understand some things come out through fasting and prayer which are the things that are demonic but however I believe that some things come out through fasting and prayer you know there are so many diabetics that are scared to fast because of the fact that they have to get that glipizide in the morning they have to get that metformin in the morning and this and this and let me tell you something and this is the trick of farmer Kelly to keep people from being able to fast and keep people from being able to be I have IBS with C, okay, and stay bloated, but not on anything for it. Okay, so Marlo, I'm going to put some, so that was Marlo, and who else was that? Marlo and Marcia, okay, I got you. I'm going to put some stuff together on that. So, um, so, so, but I believe that when we fast, yes, most people dig their grave. They don't dig. Listen, T, they don't dig their grave with no fork. They dig their grave with their teeth. That's how they do that. And I just, I, I'm just going to be very honest and transparent. Um, I, I find it hard to believe that the church is over six, over 50% overweight. And we're supposed to be people that fast and pray. We might be praying, but we can't be fasting. Not, 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 not when I, everywhere that I go minister, 50 to 60% of the people are overweight. And I want to say, and, and, and a great deal of those that are overweight, morbidly obese. Because if we hate the marriage, because if we stick to the protocol that God has given us, Fasting and prayer, uh, this this obesity and this morbid obesity and all of this sickness in the church. I, I just I just don't believe I just don't believe that we will be dealing with that. I, I just really don't. Yes, ma'am. Braggs is a brand. It is a brand. 
It has a yellow label, and it'll say Bragg's on it. Go, if you go in the vinegar section, it'll be there shouting at you loud and clear. It's a real loud bottle, and it'll have a, the Bragg's. You get the mother of, um, it's like you literally get the root, the mother. They call it the mother or something like that. So um, that that's what I really believe. And so that's what, you know, I'm really, really working on with my transformers is, you know, for them to have a lifestyle. To have a lifestyle of health and a lifestyle of wellness. And um, that's what we're working on. So it starts with how we prep. It starts with how we prep our foods to begin with. Yes, Tam is, Tam is with the mother. Does Bragg's, does the ACV come with the mother too? Feeding the physical and starting the fit, fit spiritual. Jesus help us to do better. Yes, ma'am. If we ask him to help us to do better, we will. You know what, Marla? I think we have come to a place where we, we ask Jesus to do everything else. But we don't ask Jesus to help us with what we put in our mouth. Lord, have mercy. Mm. Mm. We don't do it. We don't do it. You Listen, T, and not only GNC, but now, um, now when Dixon Publix got brags now too. Mm-hmm. So you don't have just have to go in the health food store to get. It used to be that was the only place you could find brags was in a health food store. But now because everybody got to get a piece of the pie and everybody got to get some money, you can find the brags actually in Publix. You can find brags in Publix, Walmart, and Win Dixie. Yep. Okay, so as we're talking and getting ready to close out, Malika says she uses ACV daily. So Malika and T. Faye, can you tell us what, um, and Tammy, can you tell us what the benefits have been for you? Have you seen a difference in regards to using the ACV? And if so, what are the differences that you have seen so that they can see? We so off topic, y'all, about these oils, but come on, let's go with it. So, um. T. Faye, what are some benefits that you that you think that you have noticed from using the ACV? Tammy, what are some of the benefits that you think that you have seen from using the ACV and the others who have used it as well? What are some of the benefits that you have seen um, with using it? I really, I'm really not a, uh, I'm a, um, I'm a vinegary, I am a vinegary girl, so I love vinegar. So Latanya. You say some, you say energy. I'm a vinegary girl, so um, I love vinaigrette dressings. Um, I could put vinegar on anything. If I eat some French fries, if I bake some French fries in the oven, I'm gonna put some vinegar on them with a little bit of salt and pepper. I use it as a toner, and it also helps me with digestion. You love T. Faye. What inches you had around your waist? You ain't had girl. Please, y'all need to see this chick named T. Faye Dudeney. She's so cute, child. I'm talking about she got some inches around her waist. <laughs> girl, please. But she said she lost some inches around her waist. Um, lost inches around her waist. Yes, for me, it is definitely uh, my digestion. I, I use the uh, lemon water. Hey, Pastor T. I use the lemon water. For um, the same thing, it helps me with my digestion, um, and that is really one of the things that I use to start healing my irritable bowel syndrome was that lemon water, and plus the fat increasing um, increasing the fiber that my fiber intake as well. And I love and found out that I love oatmeal, so I started doing that. I've tried it, yeah, and felt so much better. Yes, and it helps with bloating. Yes, yeah, when you get that yucky, yucky feeling in that bloating, yes, it does. So it does help with that. Cool beans. All right, guys, so there you have it. So this week, um, join me again on Wednesday. We're going to be, we are going to go back into female flow. That is going to be our midweek wellness manner series for the next couple of Listen, when you do this wellness party, you're going to let me be good. You're going to let me be nice and be good and behave. Please, ma'am. Please. When I come over to the salon and we do this little party, we gonna, you're going to let me behave. You ain't going you ain't gonna to make me act up, are you? Anyway, y'all, she is a hoot. She is hilarious. Hilarious. You, you beyond. You beyond a mess, but you a blessed mess. Kim Daniels got a book called, called that. Yes, ma'am. So, 
that's what we need to do with that. So it's been good, y'all. I'm so glad for the little sidebar and the fresh breath with the um, other content is good. And I think it's blessed some other people as well. You know, a lot of times God knows what we need, when we need, and how we need it. And sometimes we just need something to get our minds off of the daily cares of the world. So I appreciate you all. T, I'm going to be reaching out to you this week in regards to this wellness party just to see how we can get that going i still have some little dynamics and moving pieces that i'm working on for that but um we can go ahead and get it popping and um thank you guys so much so join me wednesday for female flow at 5 p.m where we're going to deal with issues of female health reproductive health and the things that we just deal with with health and wellness as women and then Thursday, we're going to be doing therapy Thursday, where we're going to continue on with emotional release. And that's really, really been great, too. And that's really been helping people. So, uh, y'all, it all goes back into wellness. If you need a um, complimentary wellness analysis, you can contact me at jewelswellness.org to schedule an appointment. Um, you're going to be back on Wednesday. Yeah, be back on Wednesday and then put it on the big screen TV so all your clients can see me. So I could be a, so I could be a community celeb. 5 p.m., 5 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. So that's where we are. So it all goes back into wellness. My wellness program, I like to deal with the four areas of people's life. I like to deal with them spiritually. I like to deal with them socially, economically, and physically. So I like to deal with every area of their life. There are 10 dimensions of wellness. And most people like to just focus on weight loss. And that's not my deal because I feel like if you eat well and you improve your lifestyle, you improve your mindset, weight just becomes a byproduct. And what happens when you just focus on the weight, that's why the weight comes back. Because you just focus on the weight. And the minute you get stressed, the minute you get frustrated, the minute you get upset, whatever the case may be, you get these cortisols going, this weight comes back. You can have non-caloric weight gain, which most people don't even realize. You can have a whole myriad of plethora of things that go on that cause you to gain weight. But when you have other catalysts that cause you to want to be well and to achieve wholeness, see, you ain't got to worry about weight. You don't have to worry about it. Because you got a different mindset. And that's my goal, to be um, a game changer when it comes to people's mindsets. So, thank you for much for joining the Wellness Lady. Y'all know I love y'all. And it's always so fun with y'all. Even when I come on some days and I'm not feeling good and not feeling well, it's always fun with y'all. So, thanks for a great conversation. Talk to y'all Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Female Flow.